I'm really excited about the Big Cat Alliance and the resources that we'll be able to share. I wanted to share with you a website created by our webmistress, Isabel Cruz, that is designed for each one of the groups who broke out from the Denver, Colorado conference to be able to have a private area where they can share all of their communications and resources only within their group until they're ready to share them with the broader audience. And so this website is set up in uh, two different levels. There is a level that is public facing to the general public, which is this light orange area here. And anything that we post on these pages, unless we make them private, by there's ways you can do that in WordPress. But for the most part, this area will be public to the world. And so it includes a page on membership. that spells out the guidelines for membership. And when they fill out the registration form or when they contact us here, then this will send a message to the person of our choosing who will be dealing with those messages to then go back to the whole group and ask for input as to whether or not you know anything about the organization that's wishing to join us. Once that organization or person is approved as a member, then they will have access to these items here in this dark orange bar. I'm logged in right now, but if I were not logged in, I would not be able to see anything except a very brief overview of what each of these things is. It wouldn't have any of the level of detail that I'm about to show you. And I can do this at the end and show you what it looks like to the public. The news section is something where I think a lot of us are duplicating efforts because we all have our different Google alerts set to tell us about things that are happening with lions or tigers or animal abuse or those different topics. And we already have a full-time person whose job it is to constantly be scanning the globe for any kind of news about big cats. And so she, her name is Susan, and she is currently posting all of those to a site called Pressly. And then this news feed is something Isabel managed to <laughs> configure that brings in that news feed. It's not perfect because it's bringing news from a news feed in, but at least it gives you an overview of the different things that are going on so that you can click on them, see if there's anything more that you want to find out about that article, and hopefully click on one of the links there to get to the actual story. You can also share these on your social sites. Since this is being updated every day, you guys will always have the most recent news that has anything to do with big cats anywhere in the world. The advocacy page answers a problem that we've had for a long time. Big Cat Rescue pays I don't know, something like 50000 a year for the service that we have over at catlaws.com that allows us to have a person come there, type in their email address, and find their legislator. But the issue is that if you guys send people to our site, then we're collecting all of their data, and sanctuaries don't want to do that. They want to keep their donors, their advocates, inside their own ecosystem. So what we've done here with advocacy is created an area where all of our groups can get together that are in the advocacy group and they can determine which bills we want people to take action on. Right now, the federal bill that we all agreed was something that we wanted to be behind is the Big Cat Public Safety Act. So if you were to click on that, this is something the public can see. It tells people all about the bill and then instead of sending them to Big Cat Rescue site, what we're doing here is showing them how to look up their lawmaker on the congress.gov site. And that way nobody is collecting their information. We're giving them some sample text here to then write their email or make their call to the legislator directly. So that again, it's going directly between our donor or our prospect or our advocate 
to the lawmaker and none of us are intervening in gathering any of that information. I know it's not optimal for those of us who use that as a way of generating a relationship with our people, but for people who don't have that ability, this is a great way for you to be able to encourage people to be advocates and not have to be sharing their access. This area of the site called Rescues is not fleshed out yet. Isabel's still working on something here, and what she sees as um, helpful to the group would be something where all of the members could have a way of keeping an up-to-date area that shows, I have space for three lions, I have space for one tiger, and so that we could easily go in there as those things change, as they always do, and update what our capacity is. So it makes it easier for anybody who finds out about a rescue to immediately look at the group and say, oh, okay, we know we have space here, so we can go ahead and commit to saying, yeah, I think we can place your 57 cats um, based on the amount of space that we see out there. So this needs a lot more work as far as being able to show the spaces that are available and maybe even the funding that might be available for those kinds of rescues. The member list currently is something that I'm just creating from the people who are actually signed up at Big Cat Trust. And <clears throat> this is open to all of the members of the Alliance as they get approved to be brought in here and put into alphabetical order with a link to their individual page. And so each organization can create a page about their, their um, participation here. And I thought about linking this directly out to each website, but it may not be the best thing to do because your part of what you're doing here as part of this alliance may be different than your overall purpose. So I'm certainly open to discussion on how you guys want that to work, but currently I've made it so that each page can be edited for what that organization not member, but the organization. So like Big Cat Rescue might have two people in here as members, but the, the um, member list here is just the list of the organizations. And again, you saw the contact us, which is the form whereby somebody can either send an email or say, hey, I run a nonprofit organization that doesn't buy, breed, or sell, and so I think I would like to be part of this. What do you guys think? And so they can send the message there. In the private part of the website, you have groups. And these would be the groups that were set out during the conference, but we may come up with other groups as well. And the idea is that these groups are working on specific issues. And so we have a group called communications. And inside communications, you can see there's a home page. They have, the, and it lists who the members are here, or you can find it here. Communications has their own forum, and you can subscribe or unsubscribe to the posts from everything that happens under the communications forum if you are a member. Now, I'm not currently a member. <laughs> I've made myself a member of everything so that I can set these up, but you guys are welcome to kick me out at any time. I haven't played around with this documents portion much yet, but I think it's going to be very interesting. I was looking for some sort of a way that we could have like a filing cabinet of documents, and this seems to give us the ability when you hit create new doc to create a title, create the content, and then there's a lot of different options that you can do. So you can say which group should this be associated with and pick it from a drop-down list. This one is in the communications group. You can choose who can read it, who can edit it, who can read the comments, who can post comments, who can view the history, and then you can create folders, which I love. I absolutely love that. Uh, tags that help you to find the documents that you're looking for and if there's like a parent group. So like if you were going to say communications 
news that you might have underneath that reporters, TV shows, um, commenting as a reader, you know, different types of sub paragraph, sub folders for that. And then you would just hit save. I'm going to go back. The members will list who the members of that particular group are. Right now, I'm the only member because we haven't invited the communications group yet to the site. But once the communications people get in here, like I said, they can take me out and they can have just the members of their group in here. And so that's the only people who are going to be able to see the stuff that they do. Here, they can send an invite to invite people to their group. So once somebody is a member, they can choose those members from here and add them if they have any media that they want to add. So uh, photos or videos or uh, albums that they want to create, that can all be done here. The cover photo is this photo right here, and you can change that by selecting that. And then managing your group gives you the opportunity to say what the name of the group is, what the group description is that appears up here in this part here. Um, if you want the group members to always be notified of any changes via email, you can set your privacy options. So I've set it to be a private group, which means only members of that group can see the things that are happening in that group, including the forum. And group invitations are currently set to group admins only. Each one of your groups may have different decisions that they want to make as far as who can be a person that can invite somebody else, and you guys can change that right there. The photo is just this little image here. You guys are welcome to change that. This lists your current members. Again, I'm not a member of communication, so you guys can take me out at any time. This will show you any requests where people have asked to be a member of your group, and this will give you your media that you have, and who can actually edit the albums. All of your documents, once you list them, will be there. Another link out to your forum. Make sure you select the right forum, communications, for the communications group. And then you can delete. So if you wanted to completely delete the entire group, you can do that too. So that's why it's important that you <laughs> make sure that the people have the power to do that, know what they're doing, because you don't want them to accidentally delete the group for everybody thinking that they're only deleting it for them. Members lists all of the members. It'll list everybody that you have friended. So you might have friends within different groups, even though they may not be. Like I sent a membership request to Meredith and she would have to accept that. Same thing with Robin. This will list the people who have actually accepted my friendship. And then here is a map. So when you're filling out your profile, you need to be sure and put in your sanctuary or your nonprofit's URL and your full address. So once you put your full address in, you will show up on the map. And I think this will be very helpful whenever there's a rescue involved that we can see, oh, well, this person is the closest to Louisiana, or this person is the closest to New York. This page just gives you an overview of the activity that has happened. And these are all of the forums. So what I did over here was I made the first forum, the rules, And the first thing we want people to know is the forum rules before they start participating in the forums. So those rules have been drafted and appear here. And if we decide as a group to change the rules, you can always edit them. And there's also something called edit with visual composer. So if you're familiar with editing in a WordPress environment, you can just choose edit. If you don't have any idea what you're doing in WordPress, then the visual composer kind of makes that simple. We'll go back to forums.
the public forum does not mean public to the general public. This is just public to all of the members of the Big Cat Alliance. So no matter which group you're in, you can see this forum. And it has all of the same types of things as the other forums do. I made a sticky post to put at the top of each one until we get familiar with it. And this talks about how the public forum works. So it'll explain to you, like if you want to put a link in your, in your post, how to go and do that to upload a document, how to get the link and put it in. And then what the options below the post, so here's where you would put your post in. <clears throat> you would want your tag to always be the same as the forum name. So in this one, it's public. And then underneath, if I were posting it to be super sticky, which means it gets stuck to the top of everybody's forum or sticky, it just gets posted to the top of this forum or just normal. And so in most cases, you're going to want normal. And say you post something and then you got to go back and edit it to add a link. You can do that. You can make it unsticky, which means it takes it off at the top of this list. You can merge different um, topics that you've discussed. You can put it in the trash. You can call it spam, which probably would never happen because we all know each other. And you can hit reply so that it all stays within that, that group. I haven't played around much with introductions, but I left it up here in case you wanted to introduce yourself. If you didn't know everybody, that's an area where you could do that. And then each one of the groups that was listed up here, if you are, so first you're a member and then you're part of a group and then your group has a forum where you guys talk. So that's how that works. So these are the different group forums and each group has one forum and then underneath each forum, they would have topics. So you can see here some of the recent topics that I had just created this morning. How public forum works, that's in the public forum. How training forum works, that's in the training forum. How resource forum works, and you can see these are all hyperlinks. So if you wanted to go directly to them, you could do it right there. Site issues would be a place where if something's broken or it's not working, you can post it in here. And Isabel is BCR staff, so Isabel can check that out and find out what's happening. Sometimes when plugins update or themes update, things can crash. And thankfully, Isabel is a genius and manages to keep things running. So like clicking on that topic takes you to how the advocacy forum works, which is a topic inside of advocacy. And again, you have all of these ways that you can either make this a favorite, you can, uh, I could unsubscribe if I didn't want to be notified anytime people were commenting on this anymore. And again, down here is where you would put your tags and whether or not you wanted to be notified or not. The job board is also a work in proce progress. I don't know what Isabel has planned for us here. And if you guys have any ideas, that would be helpful. But my thinking is we often have jobs available or maybe even jobs wanted. And so having a way that people who are members of this big cat alliance could find out what those opportunities are would be listed here. On the back end of the property, This is the dashboard. So if you are familiar with WordPress, you know how this works. And except I don't know how my mouse works. So the posts and the pages are the things that are visible to the public for the most part, unless you protect them. The comments can be comments from anybody, either from the public or from the Alliance. And these are set so that people can't comment without it being monitored because you don't want spam all over the website. So you don't want the public being able to have, have that opportunity. One of the ways that we can do this is to say that you have to have two comments approved before you can just automatically be approved. And so that way, if we approve the first two comments that you make, then after that, you'll just get approved immediately. This is the job 
word thing that she's working on that I don't know anything about, so I can't help you there. <laughs> this is where you would manage any documents that you have uploaded. This is managing the map that shows where everybody is from. I'm not very familiar with Buddy Forms or this yet. The contact form is going to be who those emails go to when people fill out the contact form. The forums is a place where you can create forums. This is where I created all of those different forums and set the privacy levels. So you can see introductions is open, but these are all private. Users will list all of the users of the website that are currently approved and you can manage adding people and profile feeds and all that sort of thing, but you won't have to worry about that for, for much of what you're doing probably. This sets the permissions for the groups. So if you wanted to create a post that everybody in the world could see, you would come back here to posts, add new, you would write in your title, you would type in your content, you could choose whether this was a draft that you wanted other people to edit or whether it was public. If you wanted to password protect it or make it private. And so probably most of the time, if you want to keep it private, I would suggest making it private and not password because that's a pain in the neck. And then that way only the people who have that link, could actually go and see that page. I come down here and figure out which category it goes in. So is it something that only pertains or pertains mostly to advocacy or announcements or member pages or news or whatever it applies to, you would check the box for that. If there were tags, like say it applied to lions and ocelots, well, you would type in lions comma ocelots and hit add the tags so that people can easily find it. This you're not gonna mess with much setting your featured image, you click on that, it allows you to either choose from your media library, the images that are already in there, or you can upload a file that is under 10 megabytes. And please, for your photo image, please try to keep it at under two megabytes. And then it'll set that as the image that you see on that page when you're looking in the, the listings of the pages. The way you get back out to the site is to go up here, visit Big Cat Trust, visit site, and now you're back out on the back end or the front end. And over here is where you can see everything pertaining to your own profile. So um, you can edit your profile, change your photo, change your information, you could log out. Your um, All of these things will tell you what you've done, which groups you're part of. And then if you wanted to edit it, you go here. And here you can see everything about you, your activity, your profile, your notifications, your messages, your friends, your groups, your forums, articles, docs, media settings, and location. And you can change all of that. You can see how I put my location in here. You can check to make sure which groups you are a part of. So I am currently part of resource sharing and all members, but if I wanted to leave that group, I could leave that group or I could contact training and ask them to accept me. There's a search feature there. And these icons right here, we haven't linked up yet. If the Alliance decides to put together a Facebook page, a Twitter account, a G plus or a LinkedIn page, then we would hot link those to go to that. And anytime you get lost, you can go back to the beginning by clicking the icon, which will take you back to the front page, which tells you all about the Big Cat Alliance and how to become a member. Down here at the bottom, you have a search field for anything that's on the website. This will list all of the recently published articles. These are from the newsfeed. 
This lists the people who were most recently active, tags that were commonly used. Over here, you can put, I want to see the newest groups. I want to see the most active groups. And I want to see the most popular groups. This little button will get you back up to the top of the page. This little button will take you into the information about your own account where you can make those settings or you can log out. So I'm going to log out and I have some other pages open that I'm going to shut down so that I am completely logged out. So this is what you would see if you were the public and you just happened to come to the Big, Trust, Big Cat Trust site. So you can see about what you would need to do to become a membership or become a member. You would be able to read the news because of course we want people to know stuff that's going on out there. In the member list, you would see the organizations who have become part of the Alliance. You would be able to contact the group and ask to join. Under members, you would be able to see this that tells you who the individual members are. But then when it comes here, as far as what people can see about that member, it just shows you kind of generic stuff. So let's say that somebody clicks on that. They see I'm a member of communications. They want to go to communications. What they get is <laughs> this is a private group to join. You must be a registered member and request group membership. So if they want to try and do that, and same thing goes for the forums, they're not going to be able to see the detail of the forums. They could read the forum rules because we want them to know that we're going to really lock this down. And they could see any introductions that we made to each other but they would not be able to see any of those other group forums down here. You see it's just blank. I'm thinking the job board is something that we will want to make public, so I'm not sure if it's in the right place here. Seems like we would want to be soliciting outside of our organizations and not <laughs> robbing from each other, so that might be something that needs to go into this light orange area instead of up here. If somebody decides that they do want to register, it puts them through all of the paces of registering. And when they hit complete sign up, then that's going to send the alert to whoever is monitoring the site to then reach out to the rest of the group and say, this is somebody who has applied. What do you guys think? If you're logging in after you've already been approved and joined, then you would enter your username or email address, depending on how you set that up, and your password. And the Remember Me would give you cookies on your website so that it can remember you when you come back to this website. I don't do this because I have so many WordPress sites. I don't want it automatically taking me into one when I really want to be in others. And of course, a lost password because we all do that. So, hope you guys like it. It was a lot of fun watching Isabel put this together. I think we're going to use the same type of format for some of the other things that we're doing as well, because there's just so many cool tools in here. And I have the feeling we've only just scratched the surface. So I'm looking forward to working with all of you guys.